Alright guys, welcome back to our channel Beyond the Crew Life and today I'm gonna bring you a very different story and a different experience. Today I'm in Hong Kong International Airport with my best friend Captain Ivan Luziani. Thank you very much for coming here. My pleasure. Yeah, so today as a pilot we want to talk about your opportunity to become a pilot whether you want to become airline pilots corporate pilots or charter pilot so here with me is one of the best author of aviation book he has the the tail journey of corporate jet pilot captain ivan has 11,000 hours and spent the whole life dedicated to the corporate jet operation now he is flying the gulf stream 650 before that uh, he was flying in Singapore, um, Hong Kong for the air ambulance and also for the casino, all his corporate jets. So today I'm going to share with you, he was going to uh, give another perception about how to become a successful pilot. You not, uh, you don't have to become airliner, you can be a corporate jet pilot, charter pilot, flying the business jet, the beautiful Gulf Stream. So uh, hopefully you can enjoy this channel, this program and let's start. So, Captain Ivan, can mm -hmm. you tell me about your experience from scratch, from mm -hmm. nothing, to become like top notch of your career, like the Gulfstream pilot today? Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I was very lucky to be able to identify aviation mm -hmm. as what I wanted to do for a career. Okay. I began as a seven-year-old kid mm -hmm. who wanted to become a pilot, and the road that I chose to become a pilot was I went to the university, conducted uh, a four-year degree, during that time, I got all my pilot certificates. My first job was as a flight instructor, okay. which allowed me to build up my flight time, my experience. I had the opportunity to interact with a lot of people and help them achieve their own dreams of becoming a pilot. Okay. So uh, you are get your pilot license in university? That is correct. It was, well, part of the requirements of getting a bachelor's degree at the university that I attended was I had to graduate and have a commercial pilot certificate mm -hmm. with a multi-year rating okay. and an instrument rating. Wow, so uh, you're, that's FAA, right? Correct. Uh, where did you take that? In Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado, okay. So you're from scratch to CFI. Correct. And why you don't become an airline pilot instead of aiming for the corporate jet? Because a lot of people want to fly regional, fly the Southwest and mm -hmm. anything. Why you are so different? Why did you choose corporate jet? Well, the degree that I undertook in the university was intended for airline pilots. Mm. At the time, airlines were requiring any candidate to have a four-year university degree. Okay. So I completed that course. Mm -hmm. Every one of my classmates wanted to become an airline pilot. Mm -hmm. But in my particular case, I was put to business aviation one day when I was in Aspen, Colorado, okay. doing some training with a new student, uh, mountainous terrain training. Mountainous terrain? Okay. Yeah, and I saw a Learjet 35 okay. business jet. The Lear and 35, right? It's a yes. really famous airplane. <laughs> yes, and from that point, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Okay. And that's what I've done ever since. It's been 37 years, and I wouldn't have changed a thing. I love it. What is the main difference between corporate aviation and the airline. an airline job? There is no routine in anything we do. Every trip that we fly is different. You go to different destinations, you fly with different people. Everything that we do is absolutely different. So you never know where you're going to fly tomorrow? Well, you will have some time to know, uh, but you don't have the routine of flying from point A to point B and do that every day, every week, oh, every okay. month. Actually, how many hours we can get as, uh, as a newcomer pilot who wants to build a time? How many hours that normally they can get from the corporate jet operation? Well, as a corporate pilot, you don't fly as much as our counterparts in the airlines. Okay. On average, you do about three to 400 hours a year. Three to 400 hours. Yes. Okay. Unlike an airline pilot that can do 900 hours a year. A thousand maybe. Yes, or even a thousand hours. Yes. Wow. So um, if you have to choose, if uh, you, you have to suggest all of the viewers now, if they just graduate from the flying school, they have like maybe 250 hours or 30, 300 hours, mm -hmm. is that hard to join the corporate jet operation or it's better for them to apply to the airline? I believe that it would be a lot easier to join an airline, okay. build up your time, decide if that is the route you want to follow, Okay. and then 
if that is what you want to do, continue being an airline pilot. Being an airline pilot is actually a good job. Provides you some stability, continuity, and you're able to fulfill your dreams. Being a corporate pilot can be a bit of a challenge because unlike an airline, uh, you may be switching jobs from one company to another one to you get to the job that you want to have. Okay. So you mean that the corporate pilot is the next level of the airline? We can say that. I mean, well, no, I would say that uh, they're both very different. Uh, you just need to decide what you want to do. Mm. Nine out of ten people will select an airline job because that's what they know. But you need to find out that there is more than just an airline job. That's the point. I mean, yeah. it's not only become airline pilot, right? Correct. Yeah. And um, if we are looking for a job to the corporate pilot. And uh, do we need to deal with the owner, or how can we directly know? Okay, this owner has the golf stream, and how we apply to that corporate chat? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, as a corporate pilot, you basically work for a company oh, that okay. operates or owns a business jet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a corporate pilot, networking, knowing your way around, knowing all the people, okay, that's a key. So you don't directly work for the owner? Well, you could. You could work directly for the aircraft owner or you could work for the company that is managing the aircraft on behalf of that owner. The company management, right? Correct. Okay. So in this case, you work for uh, the company that manages the owner airplane. Is that, that is right? correct. That is correct. I work for an aircraft or, uh, company that manages aircraft on behalf of aircraft owners. Okay, is that the Metrojet? That is Metrojet. Metrojet. So you apply for the Metrojet and then um, you fly for the owner airplane who managed by the Metrojet. That is correct, yes. How many destinations, Amanda? How many destinations can yeah. we fly to? Yeah. Uh, as a corporate pilot, you can fly anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world? Yes. <laughs> anywhere in the world. You could, be, you could be having lunch in Paris and dinner in Moscow. And the next day, you could be having breakfast in Hong Kong or Japan. Wow, that, that's really uh, interesting. How you prepare yourself for that kind of flight or route that you never flown before? Well, the key of business aviation is the flexibility that it gives the aircraft owner to go where they want to go, uh -huh. when they want to go. As a corporate pilot, we basically prepare ourselves to the uncertainty of not always knowing mm. where you need to go. Do you need to get another training? Let's say today you're gonna fly to Africa and then you never been there before. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a line training or maybe a simulator to fly at that point? If you have enough time to do that, yes, that would be good. But sometimes, you know, you may be going someplace where you have not been to before. And how you prepare yourself? Well, you do have a good support system in place. You have dispatchers. Um, you talk to other pilots who have been there before. You wow. get their experience. So you basically have to do a lot more than an airline pilot. As an airline pilot, you do have a very good support system in place mm -hmm. to help you fly safely from point A to point B. As a corporate pilot, you may not have that luxury. So you need to be a little bit more able to take the initiative to get yourself ready so you prepare everything by yourself then well most everything you do have uh, some support systems in place great but you sort of lead the charge you basically take the initiative of getting things moving okay yeah. so how many planes do you flown? like you now you fly Gulfstream 6 right yes it's beautiful airplane can you tell the audience about the Gulfstream I think you really love Gulfstream I do uh, Goldstream is a phenomenal airplane. It's a very well-known aircraft in the business aviation community. Uh, it is very well known for performance. It is very well known for reliability. Uh, aircraft owners like it a great deal. Uh, it's a real joy, a real privilege to fly. How fast the plane uh, can fly? The Goldstream 650 has a normal cruise speed of uh, Mach decimal 90. 90, almost That's, Mach 1, right? That is basically 90% of the speed of sound. Okay. Uh, long range cruise speed is uh, Mach decimal 85, so it is a very fast airplane. Very fast airplane. Yes. And what is your first jet experience flying? What kind of? My very first jet was a Citation 2. Citation 2, Citation the 550, right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that airplane was a great transition from turboprop to jet engine. Mm. Okay. It really prepared me for the one job that followed, which was flying Learjet. Okay, mm -hmm. then you fly Learjet, you fly Citation, and finally uh, end up now in Gulfstream. Well, I also flew Challengers, I flew Falcons, I flew Falcons. Wow, okay. Yeah. 
Jeez, it's a lot of airplanes. Yes. Then I uh, I heard that you have several licenses. It's not only FAA. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Yeah. How many licenses do you have? I have uh, six licenses. I have a license from Macau. I have a license from Hong Kong. Hong Kong, Macau, FAA. The USA, Switzerland. Swiss. Chinese. Chinese. Yeah. Wow. The question is how you prepare yourself for those six licenses because a lot of audience. They, they even feel stressful when they get an FAA license, but you own like six licenses. How you manage to study that? Well, I began with an FAA pilot certificate. Okay. That was my first pilot license. Your mother license? That's correct. Um, from there, it all depends where the job took me. Mm -hmm. If I was flying in another country, I would be required to obtain a license from that country. Okay. That means that uh, I have to prepare for the written exams and so on. But once you've done the first one, the next one is a lot easier. A lot easier. Yes. And um, as the newcomer, what is the what is the tips for them to become like you, like successful pilot? Do do they have to keep studying? Even though a lot of people now is jobless. Mm -hmm. Like in my country, Indonesia, for now is maybe a thousand pilot cannot find any job. They are already commercial, single engine. Some of them are already multi engine, mm -hmm. and they cannot find any job. So, what is your suggestion for them, Joey? Okay. Well, a job as a pilot can be equated to running a marathon. Okay. It's not how fast you run; it's how long you're able to endure and overcome obstacles. It's not easy, but if you have the, the perseverance, the determination to overcome the obstacles, you get your break. Mm. And if a door closes and you have the perseverance to continue looking, another door will open. Another door will open. Yeah. So guys, it's not only airline. You can be a corporate pilot and he suggested that you at least uh, afford like 1500 hours is that correct mm -hmm. to start your career meanwhile you can become a CFI teach people to fly gaining experience mm -hmm. and finally uh, get a job maybe as an airliner junior airliner or maybe corporate uh, pilot and uh, you fly in Hong Kong and all the time I mean yes. you're based here yes I am why, why you choose Hong Kong instead of another country well it's interesting I came to Asia in 1995 mm -hmm. I began working for a company in Singapore okay and that eventually led me to another job in Macau. Wow, okay. Where I was there for 11 years uh, before moving over to Hong Kong. So um, I enjoy Asia. Okay. Uh, my wife is from Asia. Oh. And business aviation is flourishing in Asia. So if you really want a job in business aviation, Hong Kong, the mainland are prime locations. Hong Kong, the mainland. Pilot. Wow, nice. So mm -hmm. you suggest them to now considering to get a business aviation job instead of airline then, right? Well, it's a decision that uh, ultimately you have to make on your own. In my particular case, I have been a corporate pilot all my life, coming okay. up in, seven, okay. in 37 years of aviation. Um, no regrets on my end. And, but I also know airline pilots who are very happy with their career. Mm. So it all depends on what you want. Okay, it depends what you want, right? Yes. But some of them, they close their mind. I mean, I only want to become an airline pilot instead of corporate pilot mm -hmm. because they don't really know about the corporate mm -hmm. pilot. Yes. So I suggest you to buy his book because I, I really open my eyes, open my mind when I uh, read his book. So can you tell you. them about your book? What okay. is your share in your, your lovely book? Okay, well, I wrote a book three years ago with the purpose of sharing my experience, my knowledge, with uh, the new generation of aviators, prospective aviators. Uh, my whole idea was to encourage them to pursue their dreams and achieve their dreams of becoming pilots. Okay. So, uh, how can get your book? Uh, the book is available on Amazon. Amazon. And a few other online retailers. Great. That's the tale of corporate pilot journey, right? Mm -hmm. An then, aviator's journey. Aviator's journey. Aviator's journey. So, that's the fact. You don't have to become an airline pilot. There's another opportunity. And the last question, if they choose to become a Gulfstream pilot as first officer, what's their salary they can expect? Uh, it all depends on the company. Yep. It all depends on the location. But uh, a Gulfstream first officer in Hong Kong can expect to make about uh, 15,000 US dollars a month. A month. 15,000 US dollars a month. And when they get a, a captain position, what's the expected? It's going to be about twenty to twenty-two thousand. Twenty to two thousand dollars. It's worth it, right? I mean, uh, they work hard, study hard till this 
position. A lot of people, they don't have any idea how much salary. They always think the airline is the highest. But now, guys, you know that the corporate pilot is also over you amazing income. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's our interview. Get his book and study. And I mean, uh, enjoy the experience as the corporate pilot. Hopefully, this can open your new pers perspective about the aviation. Thank you very much, Captain Ivan. My pleasure, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you.